Well, hello everyone. My name is Roger Scott. I'm the head trader for Wealth Press, and today is June 3rd. I better start putting my t-shirts on because it's getting warm around here. I think it's in the mid 80s or 90s. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't go, I hardly ever go outside. But let's get into the market right now. Now, Wednesday, extending a three-day of gains as economies reopen for shutdown they imposed to stem the coronavirus pandemic. We are seeing more and more openings. As a matter of fact, I just read this morning that Italy is opening its borders, which is really interesting because we still don't have a vaccine. Asian indexes closed higher and European markets were up midday trading while Wall Street futures pointed to gains on the open. So far, markets momentum has not been derailed by the wave of protests across the U.S. It's amazing, isn't it? It, it just seems everybody's focused on COVID-19 and everything else is on the sidelines. Investors appear to be focused instead on hopes that the worst of the pandemic downturn has passed. U.S. jobless claim rates were near 15% that month and is expected to hit about 20% when the May figures are released on Friday. Payroll processor ADP, which is due today, surveys for hiring by private U.S. companies is due to report today. The government's weekly tally of applications for unemployment aid, meanwhile, comes out on Thursday. So today we're going to get a private report. Tomorrow we're going to get the unemployment report. And tomorrow we're going to, and Friday we're going to get the jobless claims. So again, I believe the markets are going to see a little more volatility heading into the weekend because Thursday and Friday we have the big reports coming out. Now, today is Wednesday, and Wednesday we focus on the worst stock in the worst sector which we want to avoid or trade short. So let's take a look at it right now. We're looking at the top 10 sectors, technology, consumer discretionary, healthcare. I'm surprised healthcare is actually behind consumer discretionary and technology. And I think, and mark my words on this, write this down. I said it on the 3rd of June. I believe we're going to see a little downside with technology and discretionary and healthcare remain higher and the relative strength change on that. I believe that's gonna happen before the end of June. So expect to see some fragmentation in the sectors. It's so, more, so early in the morning, I can barely talk still. So the worst sector, energy, 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 energy. It's been bouncing, it's been, hub, it's been moving higher. The shorts have been covering, but it still remains the worst sector. So we obviously wanna either avoid or trade short the worst sector in the economy. So if you're long this sector, you wanna get out. If you are thinking of going long, don't. But if you're thinking of going short, this may be a good idea. Or if you're looking to bottom fish on energies, don't do it, your fingers will get dirty, all right? You're gonna get dirty fingers by bottom fishing. Don't, don't pick stocks at the bottom. Don't bottom fish, it's not wise. It's like surfing against the, the waves. Imagine you go into the water and you see some guy surfing against the waves. You would look at him and say, this guy needs to go into a mental institution. And that's the equivalent of trading against the flow. You want to trade with the flow, not against the flow. So again, energy is the worst sector. We go to our stock fetcher code and we can, this is my CSI scan, cumulative strength index scan. And I organize it by six month, three month and one month. And we can look at it by a switch of a click or a switch of a, a flick of a switch, we can go from the strongest stocks to the weakest stocks. And I'm gonna tell you something interesting. This thing has 466 stocks, most of the stocks that are in the S&P 500 that don't have minority shares or don't have splits and so forth. And I update them frequently. And I never really look at the, at the meat of this. I only look at the strongest, the strongest say 20 or the weakest 20. So this is the strongest 20 or so. And this is the weakest. So there's 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 five pages of this. I only look at the first and the last. And I don't even go all the way down. I look at the top, the, the worst performers, pretty much what you see here. How many we got here? Probably 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, about 20 or so. 25 of the strongest and 25 of the weakest. I never focus on the meat of all of it because it's not really relevant. I want extremes. I want extremely strong stocks or I want extremely weak stocks. And in this case, we want extremely weak stocks. So as you could see here over the last few weeks, not much has changed. And that's actually another example. 
a lot of traders are like, well, Roger, I don't want to look at 500 stocks every day. How am I going to remember things? Well, I got something to tell you. They don't change that much. I know what you're thinking. How could that be? I'm telling you. Like United Airlines, American Airlines, Simon Property Group, Nordstrom's, Carnival, they've been in the top or the bottom 10 for the last two months. I'm not kidding you. Look at my videos from two months ago. I do this at least once, twice a week. The same stocks, Delta Airlines, Coach, Boeing, Wells Fargo. Sure, they move, you know, they move from the second spot to the fifth spot, from the fifth spot to the eighth spot, but it's the same players. I mean, Simon Property Group has been on this list for two, three months now. American Airlines, United Airlines, uh, where's the, the cruise ships? Uh, let's see here. Carnival, uh, Delta. I, it's the same, same ones. And again, some may move a little higher, but the, the, it's the same players. And now the weakest stock, it was the airline and the cruise ships for a while. But now we got oil stocks, Occidental Petroleum. Look at this, the weakest stock. Six months, 61% down. Three months, 62% down. One month, 12% down. This stock doesn't have a chance in heck, in hell. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the chart. Oy vey, look at this. Talk about lack of a dead cat bounce. It goes down for the count and nothing. I mean, look. The NASDAQ 100 is almost all the way back to all-time highs, like right here. This thing hasn't moved an inch. And and if you look at the news, which I'll look right now, dividends have been cut, I believe. Look at this here. Occidental to cut dividend again to preserve liquidity. Again to preserve liquidity. This stock, it's not for this world. So again, if 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 you are long energy stocks, get out. If you're short energy stocks, good for you. If you're thinking about getting into energy stocks, don't. Go to Las Vegas, it's cheaper. At least you get comped when you're losing money. So again, I wanted you guys to see this analysis. You wanna sell short Occidental Petroleum stock, ticker symbol OXY, and if you're long this stock, get out. And if you're thinking of buying this stock, don't. Other stocks on my do not buy list, Occidental, United Airlines, American Airlines. Simon Property Group, which I told you guys a year ago, a year ago would be the weakest stock. I did, I did. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines, again, the cruise lines. Nordstrom's is bankruptcy. Carnival, cruise lines. Xerox, I think Xerox is new here, Lines Data Systems. These three may be new here. I don't remember seeing these. Um, or Apache, so I'm gonna take a look at Xerox Alliance. I think Alliance has been here. Yeah, it has been, I just haven't been paying attention. But again, you got the date, uh, Delta Airlines, Cincinnati Financial Corp, Boeing, Wells Fargo, all of the usual suspects, all of the usual suspects. Now, I've got something for you, all right? So again, you wanna avoid Occidental Petroleum stock like the plague. You wanna avoid it like avoiding COVID-19, all right? Now, did you know that there could be one thing that's preventing you from beating the market? time and time again. And that making the simple, simple change could profit. You could see profits start flowing in like an L endless stream of trades. I'm not kidding. Folks, I'm talking about pre-market trading. Now, this analysis that I just did for you, I did pre-market. 90% of my analysis of my trades that I'm going to put in during market hours, I put in before market hours. All right, so again, pre-market hours, it doesn't mean you have to trade the night session. It just means you have to analyze the market before it opens. And again, I do 80 to 90% of all my analysis before the opening bell or after the opening bell so that I could focus on execution during trading hours. And that's how most pros trade. And if you know how to do it right, you can earn up to 1,139.67% before the market ever opens. All you gotta do is click the link or the button at the end of this video and get all the details. Do it now. Don't delay, do it now. Again, I do this, Tom Busby does this. The best traders in the world do not sit there and analyze the markets during trading hours. They look for specific levels to get hit. I've been doing it this way for over 15 years and I suggest you start doing the same thing. This is great, you know why? Because you analyze the market before the opening bell, we give you the trade, by the time most traders are getting their coffee, you're done. And I'm not talking about day trading, I'm just talking about making decisions 
before the opening bell. Folks, this is the best way to trade. You don't want to miss out. Click the link below or follow the button at the end of this video. You guys have a great day and stay away from Occidental Petroleum or trade it short. Talk to you guys soon. Have a terrific, terrific week.